When calculating surface areas, what we're looking to do is take a three-dimensional object, flatten it out, and then turn it into a simple length times width area problem. If a cylinder, for example, if we cut it and flatten it out, it becomes a very easy problem to rectangle length times width. The bottom comes from the circumference of the circle, so it's 2 pi r and the height is still the height. So the surface area is 2 pi r times the height. We can apply this same idea to more regular shapes. Here's something that's shaped like a face. And if we take this face, cut it, and flatten it out, do the same thing. It's still the same kind of problem. An area or a surface area of a two or surface area of a three-dimensional object or the area of just a planar object is just length times width. So we need to figure out what the length and the width are. So this top part right here, this is y. y is equal to f of x. The, the height here is the radius. Now both of these are going to depend on the function value. So we're going to have to come up with some way of writing them both in the same terms. So 2 pi r, y is equal to f of x. First thing to notice is that there's a very simple replacement we can do for this, and that is arc length. And this is y is equal to f of x. Here's the y value. So now that we have these two things, we need to go about writing them in an appropriate way to link them together. So arc length, one way of writing this delta x. And all that's being done in addition is being multiplied by 2 pi y. So to make this area complete, 2 pi, instead of y, we'll write f of x star. And now from here, we can simply write this in integral notation. Just write this as y. leave it as f, of f prime of x, or use this notation. I don't know, I always just use this notation. I just prefer it. And that's the formula for the surface area of a solid of revolution.